This is Kai News. That's The Guardian, and I'm Harry Cole. In recent months, The Guardian has been extremely critical of other people's tax statuses, so we thought we'd have a look into theirs. In a much-hyped story back in February, The Guardian claimed that Barclays paid only 1% tax on their £11.6 billion profits. However, The Guardian and the protests that followed chose to ignore the fact that Barclays had to pay payroll taxes, the bank levy, normal recoverable VAT, employers' national insurance, SDRT and so on. Barclays used standard industry practice to reduce their tax bill, just like another company did when they sold Autotrader. In 2008, The Guardian Media Group sold half of Autotrader magazine. They made a one-off profit of over £300 million. Did they pay tax on it, though? I don't think so. They managed to avoid paying over £60 million, which should be in the public coffers right now. But how did they do it? The Scott Trust is probably one of the most unusual newspaper owners in the world. Guardian readers seem to be under the illusion that their papers are non-for-profit charity. That's just not true. In 1936, it was placed into a trust, and it's been in a trust ever since. Uh, and what that means is that the trust has a series of companies that subsidise us during the hard times. The Scott Trust used to be run as a charity, but this was wound up in October 2008. Why? It is now a limited company that owns The Guardian. And are they still living to the ideals of their spiritual godfather, C.P. Scott? C.P. Scott wrote a great leader on the occasion of the centenary of the paper. And in it, he lays out the values that he thinks the newspaper should have. And these are the values which the Scott Trust holds as its own today. Honesty, what he called cleanness, and we interpret as integrity, courage, fairness, duty to the paper and to the readers of the paper and to the society in which the paper is published. Where's the honesty, the integrity, and the duty to society in lecturing other people about tax avoidance, yet doing exactly the same yourself? Guardian insiders tell us that there was no other reason for the change in the Scots Trust charitable status other than to avoid paying the capital gains tax liability that arose on the sale of the Guardian Media Group's interest in Auto Trader magazine to Apex Partners. Not being a company, the Trust did not qualify for the substantial shareholdings exemption on the disposal of a wholly owned trading subsidiary. But by forming the Scott Trust Limited and dissolving the trust and distributing its assets to the new company, Alan Rusbridger and the other Fat Cat directors were able to avoid giving the Treasury millions. And what did they do with the money? Let's see what 300 million quid tax-free gets us. Unfortunately, the Guardian wouldn't let us film inside. It seems there is a secret about their building, and there are about the tax structures and investments that paid for it. But the spending didn't stop with the palatial headquarters. GMG and Apex purchased part of EMAP, a publishing firm that specialises in trade magazines, for close to a billion pounds. But it's how they went about this purchase that is rather interesting. Apex and GMG used a series of Cayman-based companies to set up Eden Bidco, the company that they used to purchase EMAP. Why? Let's ask Guardian business correspondent Nick Matheson. They don't actually pay taxes to the Cayman Islands, but they pay a, a small fee uh, towards them. Um, the Caymans is in fact a tax haven. The Guardian press office refused to comment on many other offshore companies we suspected that the Guardian media group have an interest in. Banking, hedge funds and market speculation is often targeted by the Guardian. Yet GMG's own accounts reveal their directors, with the help of Cambridge associates, have gambled with millions. We put it to the Guardian Media Group press office that they had over £96 million tied up with Cambridge Associates. They didn't deny it. They didn't even try to explain it. Alan Rusterdiver responded to some of our concerns with a long and misguided rant. However, it did little to actually address the allegations we have raised. I wonder what C.P. Scott would make of this today. I think he would be deeply shocked. Media fat cats, tax avoidance, offshore assets, hedge funds. C.P. Scott must be turning in his grave. But at the end of the day, The Guardian is just like any other profit-making organisation, only with a little bit more hypocrisy.